Alrighty, good evening folks, Phil Gallagher of Thrib and you here for another Legacy stream. Today we are going to go and try out a couple of new cards. Uh, we're going to continue testing Luminarch Aspirant, which has overperformed for me in the seven leagues that I have played with it thus far. Uh, maybe eight leagues, I might have played one of the deck lists twice. Um, and we're going to test out Legion Angel today. So when it ETBs, you reveal a card named Legion Angel from outside the game and put it into your hand. We're going to start with one of these in the main deck, replacing the Spirit of the Labyrinth that I was playing in the previous build. We're going to have three of them in the sideboard. Notably, for matchups where we want to actually see Legion Angel, it's very likely that we will board up to two in the main deck. SCK, thank you very much for throwing your support this way. You are sub number one of the stream. Ultramaster, I'm glad you enjoyed the Hades video. Um, I'll take a look at how the numbers went with it, see how they compare to Monster Train, see if I want to keep doing some Hades content or whatnot. Uh, very open to doing so, but like I'm not going to lock myself into a second daily series or anything like that. So it would like, alternate with Monster Train or something of that general nature. We'll figure that out later, though. Um, otherwise, this is pretty much what I'm I was playing before. Um, I am going to try one other kind of crazy person thing today. I'm going to try putting Sword of Feast and Famine into the main deck. There's so many decks that this is just very good against right now. And especially if I'm going to play something that's really taxing on my mana, like Legion Angel. Being able to, like, cast that pre-combat, untap, cast a second one, or, like, still port them afterwards sounds pretty good to me. So I'm going to try sort of Feast and Famine in the main deck and cut sort of Fire and Ice from the 75. Uh, note that I don't necessarily think that's correct in a vacuum. It's just what I'm going to try out today. Legion Angel requires three sideboard slots, and I wanted to cut one of my fair slots. But sort of Feast and Famine overperformed so much that I wondered if we can just run three equipment in the 75 and just like call it good looking something like this. Um... This is not the list that I would take into a, an event that mattered by any means. I would probably not be playing Legion Angels, and I would just be playing um, probably this list, plus or minus one card. Um, last week when I played this list, I really liked how it felt. I did really want one more flyer in the 75, though. Um, so if I were to like recommend a deck for a tournament, I'd probably cut the Spirit of the Labyrinth for a Fork Flicker Wisp or a Sarah Avenger or something like that. All right, how many, how many play points did I lose playing Mill? Enough that I have to open a couple of these. That's an old card. I don't have to open a couple of those. I just have to open one of those. We'll take that. All right. Legacy League, V8, Aspirant Angel, yes. Yeah, I was unsure about whether or not I should skip the dialogue. Like, I read incredibly quickly. Well, I mean that to, like, pat myself on the back or anything like that. But, like, I get very bored <laughs> waiting for spoken dialogue to finish when I'm playing. So, like, I'll do it for stuff that I haven't seen before uh, at the very end of the game, but I was skipping it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep this. Dionysus. But basically, however you pronounce a Greek or Roman god's name, you can't really be that wrong. Like, there's so many different pronunciation methods between, like, English pronunciation, actual British pronunciation, uh, like... Romanized pronunciation of the Greek, actual Greek pronunciation, that it's it's pretty hard to be too far off. Dr. Bill, thank you very much for your continued support. You are the second sub of the day, and uh, we've played one turn of Magic so far, so that feels pretty good. All right, uh, our vial is going to be very important since we missed the land drop. Um, hopefully we're not playing against combo. Hopefully we're just playing against a slow, dirtily control deck, and our vial doesn't get blown up. Or elked. Vial getting elked is pretty annoying, too. Probably need to put Thalia in on my turn to make it less likely that this just gets, like, upkeep, abrupt decayed or something.
game got hard to play very quickly. I think I'm supposed to port my opponent. Awkward against Swords to Plowshares, but pretty good against most other things. Opponent uh, potentially playing around a Spirit of the Labyrinth or Thalia by brainstorming there. I, I get, like, nothing out of my turn if I just work them, uh, which is super awkward. So, like, there's a world where I just play Aspirant here. And then by committing more to the board, I make it more likely that my opponent has to answer my board rather than answer my Vial. Since I have a Thalia in play, and Swords of Flautures is just, like, so, 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 so bad, um, it might just be correct to do this. Fuck me. That was unexpected. It's better to put the counter on Thalia in some ways because of uh, Ice Fang Coatl in particular. I probably can't attack with an Aspirant, so putting it on the first striker makes more sense to me. Darkin, thank you very much for following. I'd be very willing to trade Recruiter of the Guard for an Ice Fang Coatl. Like that's a that's a positive trade for me. Because like I don't want this to trade with Ice Fang Coatl. I'll just crash in there. Stoneforge. Stoneforge threatens Legion Angel next turn. Uh, yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm just casting spells. No, I've played seven leagues with the counter creature. Maybe eight. It's great. Yeah, that's annoying. We were hoping to get a whole bunch of those for free, but now we have a billion power, so. We can hopefully just kill the Oko here.
Turns into everything at that Oko. This is very awkward in terms of my mana since I don't have a second white source, but the Oko is dead. Now we're just hoping not to get Terminus. The Terminus 3 for 1 is pretty brutal here. And is also a touch awkward. Need more white than what I have. I don't think I'm supposed to play Luminarch Aspirin. I think I'm supposed to jam my sword this turn. Luminarch Aspirin is bad against decks that have sweepers. And the whole reason I was experimenting with it is because, like, Miracles is a lot less popular than other decks of this nature right now. That keeps him off of actual factual counterspell for second main phase. Alright. We force pitch Uro, which is annoying. They can now Uro from the graveyard. I have plenty of outs to that. Baraka swords to plowshares, aspirant. Um, but it's annoying as fuck. Well, they would they would just cast Coatl first. So no. Like if they have a Coatl, it's it's trading with Legion Angel. Hmm. Awkwardly, I don't have the second white, so I can't just like very safely tutor up Skyclave Apparition and deal with Ford. So I think I'm supposed to play an Aspirant, make a giant angel, and then just make something that's bigger than a row. The second Aspirant means that we're going to outclock the life gain that Uro has to offer. And I have a whole bunch of disposable bodies that I can block with. Like, that part is not an issue. The card draw is an issue. Like, spot removal spells are going to be very good against what I'm doing currently. Hey, Echo, welcome. opponent attacks with Uro, they end up taking a lot of damage back. So like, this is theoretically holding back 3, 4, 5 damage. Ugh. They just snap back Brainstorm, which means they have, like, Terminus. Ugh. Cool, we're dead. I don't know, maybe they stack it poorly and they draw the Terminus with Uro right now.
This, this mana situation is super frustrating. Do I beat Terminus in any world without a second white mana? Probably not. It's an Ice Fang Coatl. Okay. That's also annoying. Angel trades with Uro. File hits for a respectable amount of damage. Cool. There's another Terminus. Although, oh, we'll see. Every time a stream starts off like this, where we just play against a pile of 2019 cards, I, I just hate everything about Magic. I guess I just pull as much damage as I can this turn. Oko? Is Oko dead? Oko is potentially dead. This blocks that. And then I can attack Oko with one more creature than necessary, but that doesn't put my opponent's life total in a great place. If I just send it all of that all at them and then reduce their life total, try to get Revoker for that. No, I probably need to kill the Oko. Killing the Oko kind of requires everything at Oko, otherwise they can take six and block this, keep the Oko alive. God, I fucking hate this card so much. Oh, they had the Brainstorm too. Alright, cool. My decisions don't matter. Since they have the brainstorm too, now they're not getting rid of their Uro. That's super frustrating. 
Yeah, we're having fun. This is what fun looks like. We lost to, uh... We lost two Legacy Stalwarts today. Goblin Lackey's out, and White Faces, Callum Smith, is out. So, you know. Magic's great. Yep. Goblin Lackey's done streaming, and White Faces sold his collection. Yeah, he's uh, putting it towards a house or apartment or something. I think his, his terminology was a flat. Sorry, we don't want to board in all four Legion Angel. We probably want to board up to two and leave uh, two in the board to get. Um, in that case, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to board in a couple of mom, like keep in a couple of moms, or like just board in prolets. Uh, maybe mom's okay on the play. Ah, terminus is shit. Like this, the aspirant taxes build is very soft to sweepers, and I admitted that in the first video that I made with it. But normally you're playing against a dex that at most have two sweepers in the seventy-five, and that is like very, very much not the case against miracles. So if you have to deal with two. Dead of Winters in the 75, most of which aren't in the main deck, you don't actually have all that much to worry about. But when you have to worry about four Terminus, followed by some Supreme Verdict post board as well, uh, the sort of stuff that I'm doing here looks pretty bad. I think Legion Angel works really well in a vile shell where just like every turn you can keep dumping them in. Opponent is going to swords to plowshares now. Nope. Seems weird to me, but whatever you do, you. Are you just flooded and you want me to wasteland you? Like, the wasteland's on board. If it's a trap and they're flooded, I still take this.
There's a world where I just cast Sanctum Prelate two turns in a row here. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. Put it on one, followed by put it on six. Wilt is not uncommon. The underground sea has sort of piqued my interest, though. My opponent plays some big scary card this turn. I am in trouble. Good. Because that was the turn that they could go one mana removal spell into Oko or Uro. And it starts to look spooky for me. Um, best draw for me, honestly, is just a land. I would love to go Rest in Peace and Thalia in the same turn cycle. Um, I'm getting stuck on mana again. I don't know that I can take a turn off from being aggressive, but it also, at the same time, it also doesn't really feel like Thalia Go is all that strong of a play. The issue is that, like, Rest in Peace is one of my better things to cast, but doing so means that I can't then Thalia and rest in peace in the same turn cycle if I draw a land. So maybe the line is just Prelate. I'm just going to put it on one. Stop all the cantrips. If opponent rips Oko off the top of the deck, like, so fucking be it. I don't think I can wait any longer for rest in peace. I cast it now. I think it's very awkward. Because now if opponent has Snapcaster or Abrupt Decay, they get value out of it. But if I want to shut them out with potentially double prelate, this is my chance where I really have to do it. Hard call, I don't think they have it. They would have cast it last turn if they had it this turn. Sorry, they would have cast it last turn if they had it last turn. And they just went Misty Rainforest go. I 
There's a lot of respect. For... God fucking damn it. Legion Angel first. I think I Legion Angel first. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Magic is fun. Oh great, we got paired against elves, so we lost this one. I'm just going to take this out now for guys' cradle-based reasons. Two opponent has one land. Cool. That also invalidates my Jitte based lines. We shut off the Quarian Ranger. There's a chance that we get to connect with Jete later. Cool.
Honestly. Let's just not. The matchup is so incredibly unfavorable. And I just came off a very tilting match. I think it's better to just value my time and mental energy and not play that out. I have kind of a weak opening hand. I don't have enough mana. Wasteland's good against me. Alright, this also isn't a great matchup, but at least this one has play to it. Just Stoneforge and get the Batter Skull here. If I draw another land, I want to be able to Vile plus do something else, and playing Thalia doesn't do that. So, like, the first strike is nice and all. But I don't know if it gets me to where I need to go. We probably lose on the spot if opponent just has a removal spell. So Gem Palm Incinerator or uh, the other idiot will just beat me. I guess Gem Palm doesn't beat me. Yep, really needed more land here. We're going to build a house of cards is going to just hold so hard to a piece of removal. Because with a piece of removal, it's remove revoker, you spend a mana, remove this. And like Muxus hits play and I lose instantly. Yep, cool. Wow, opponent doesn't have any good goblins in hand. That's nice. I need more land. Uh... I might need to take the tempo loss to just play Vile. The issue is, like, this also gets rid of Vile. I don't know, if it gets rid of Vile, it's not getting rid of Stoneforge. I 
don't know, maybe I just need to put Aspirin in play and try to grow something larger, try to force them to do this, put batter still into play. Trying to divert some energy away from the Stoneforge Mystic. Nice. Now I can at least dream of putting the Batter Skull in play and have it doing something. So that's cool. Uh, second port's real bad for me. That's fine, though. Do you port me? I put in Batter Skull. Well, they didn't have a good goblin before, so they had to have drawn it. I can hope for that. All right, at least they're drawing poorly. All right. See how bad this is. All right, they drew a Muxus. Probably lose. Um, are we dead this turn? No, we're probably dead next turn. If they get, uh, Flame Gang. I can all just, also just get a Trash Master, use that to blow up my Batter Skull. I drew a land, which is nice, but I think I'm probably just dead. I can trade with Muxus next turn. I don't think I can attack here. I can't afford to trade three for one for the Batter Skull because then, like, the Muxus is just going to get huge and bash in and kill me. I need to take that body off the table. Yep. Opponent can sacrifice like one, two, three, four, build germ. 
and then bash in for a whole bunch and kill me over two-ish turns. Oh wait, it's plus x plus x, not plus x plus o. Um, I don't get to trade with that. All right, I'm just going to concede. Um, path is awkward, but I'll probably play it. And I will probably board in another copy of Legion Angel, maybe two. Like, Thalia is not super great in this matchup. I'll keep one. Relevantly, not having Sword of Fire and Ice matters here. And is not great, but it's a double E through Vile Hand. It's a pretty respectable hand if I draw another land, um, preferably a white producing land. No, Zap Master, I don't think I have lands in this deck based on the games tonight. Certainly not 24 of them. So now the hand is below average power level since I missed that land drop. Hopefully they don't have like a munitions expert or a gem palm incinerator. And that's also shit, but at least I can kill the goblin wacky in combat if they attack with it. Unless they just like pyrokinesis it and then put Muxus in and I just cry myself to sleep. You're telling me there's a chance. I'm going to start to grow Aspirant. Um, I have no mana for this. This the taxation here is probably actively bad for me. Kind of a dumpster fire league thus far, but uh, this is like one of the sorts of spots where Aspirin is just so, so much better than Stoneforge Mystic. When you can't dedicate mana or actually don't have access to mana to activate Stoneforge Mystic, it's pretty bad. Okay. Yes. Uh, sure.
Do I want to counter on Aspirant? I think I want to counter on Aspirant. Just like make one large creature. Main phasing it is pretty weird, though. I don't think I want a Thalia. I think I'm just going to play my Caracas and pass the turn. So I can convert a Stoneboard Mystic into a land. I don't think so. I can turn him into real bodies that can attack. Um, that's fine. That's probably not getting through. It's a pretty big risk, though, if I leave it on board. I will path it. It gives them a land, which I really don't like because they're choked on mana. But I think the way that I, I win this game is by turning creatures sideways. That's a brave attack, unless you have, like, Pyrokinesis. Oh, congrats. A lot of a lot of games from my childhood. I think I put one on Thalia for Goblin Chain Whirler reasons. Yay, Aspirant! I represented so much damage for so little mana. On the draw, do I just want one more creature that can just stop more aggro starts over another Legion Angel? Maybe?
Yeah, so assuming we actually would have gotten to our attack step, we would have gotten four plus one plus one counters out of that card. Why do you think Trap is in the side? Like, Trap very obviously only fights a couple of things, right? So... Cool. We're just gonna get Muxist on turn two. We even kept a hand that interacted with Goblin Lackey. I'm trying to get this batter skull in play and use it to stabilize. Opponent has a good chance of just going wide of me. Another removal spell is probably the end though. Just represents so much damage. There's a world where we beat this if opponent has nothing else to put in off the lackey. <clears throat> but if they have something else to put in off the lackey, I'm done -zo. I think my cat knocked something over. I'll be right back. <sighs> like, I came into this stream in a pretty good mood, and now it's just been, like, three rounds in a row where nothing I did super mattered. So, every time that happens, I just die a little more inside. I was a Maria Angel. I don't know, I'm not playing a Maria Angel. The... Legion Angel looked okay in round one.
Mary Angel is the old school um, landfall card. Uh, yeah. This is an awkward hand, but probably not bad enough to throw back. It has a lot of cards in it, more than it appears because of this. Yeah, I've made almost no decisions this league. My most impactful decision of the entire league was just deciding to concede the Elves matchup in game one rather than play it out. Oh. Are we just playing against no pile dot deck again? Or Oko? Good news is we're on track to finish this stream very quickly. I can maybe play some Hades or Monster Train or something at the end. Aspirant will be better if my opponent is a combo deck in all likelihood. Um, it's also good against Oko, but it's notably worse against something like Ice Fang Kawaddle. The Red Delver? Go and tell with days. I like that. I like that a lot. That feels pretty good after my opponent has picked up a land via days. Force pitch preordain. All right, so we're probably looking at show and tell. Uh, in which case, my hand is very stinky. Could also be some other flavor of blue based combo other than show and tell. Don't forge, get feast and famine. Next turn, hard cast feast and famine and equip it. That at least attacks my opponent's hand. Uses my mana inefficiently. But. Gives me some degree of interaction if they're trying to. Pull together a decent number of cards. Second island makes me lean towards show and tell. I don't like playing Misty Rainforest prior to that ponder. If this is show and tell, then there's soul land baselines that you shut off by doing that. I get a rebate of five mana.
They discarded a daze? You could have dazed the sword, and then I couldn't have equipped it this turn. Uh, I mean, like, maybe if you have a sneak attack or something, then that makes sense, but... I think leaving up the Wasteland is actually better than leaving up the Source of Plowshares. Why why would you play a lotus petal prior to a brainstorm? Like make all of your decisions in the most optimal way as possible, please. I'll take it. I also think if you're supposed to do that, you're supposed to do it pre-combat, so you have the potential of hitting Lotus Petal plus Emrakul. I do not believe that our opponent is an experienced legacy player. Now it's slightly more awkward. Can attack for eleven. That's probably correct to attack for seven, hold one legal angel back, move sort of feast and famine to it. Move this here, 
so I can protect from a Grizzle Brand. We will wasteland that city of traders, even though that probably does nothing. Humorously, if we had attacked, they wouldn't have been able to fetch. We beat Grizzlebrand or Emra Cool. We can't beat both. Wait, can I beat both? Uh, sacrifice two, four, six. Ooh, actually, I can beat both. And again, like, if you have Brainstorm, why are you playing other things first? Yeah, I was already thinking about Plow My Own Angel to beat Emra Cool, but. Yeah, so then I can take 15 and block Grizzlebrand. Um, the opponent would also need a counterspell. All right, that was cool. All right, port in Deafening Silence. We'll probably sub some Swords of Plowshares for Path to Exiles. Uh, Sanctum Prelate is great. We'll definitely play those. Ed, thank you very much for following. As well as Zeritzi and Brorsam from a while back. And Thalia is Bay. I missed a lot of people. Uh, under normal circumstances, Legion Angel is probably too slow. I'm probably going to board that out. Um, Jete doesn't really do anything. And I don't really want to be spending mana on Stoneforge Mystic. I think that's going to put me somewhere in this ballpark. Sword of F and Fing Dead. That's not bad. Um, what do I think of this hand? It's a vile hand with mana denial, but I still don't know that this hand is actually good. Like, Skyclave Apparition is my only creature right now, and unless my opponent, like, Show and tells in a sneak attack. This is probably not doing a ton. I think I'm going to try to fish for something that has a Thalia. Or a natural prelate, or both. This hand is way better. Uh, Hippity Long Ears, to answer your question. One hour and 18 minutes ago. This is an experiment. Like right right now I'm all about collecting data for ideas. One is awkward. One, <coughs> one eliminates some of my outs to Grizzlebrand. So I probably can't pick one here. Five, stop Force of Will. That makes it more likely that if I draw an answer to Grizzlebrand, it'll actually resolve. Uh, 
Tom's not the worst draw. That is very aggressive to try to answer Athalia. My opponent attacks and draws seven, they're not on board to Aspirant, which would be fucking hilarious. Yeah, I have two Caracas. Caracas is okay. Um, Pokemoki, as a general rule of thumb, when I'm playing Death and Taxes, I lean towards stability more so than anything else. And the more copies of Caracas you play, the less stable your mana base is. And you end up losing more games to Wasteland, you end up losing more games to... Like, back to basics, Blood Moon, drawing the second Caracas. Yeah, it it is a question of two or three. But like, as far as lands go, I am much less likely to want to play something like Horizon Canopy than a lot of my peers. I'm going to start by casting a mom without playing a land. Supporting my opponent potentially keeps them off of sneak attack. They probably can't sneak attack and activate. Three wisps to draw that can blank Grizzlebrand. Wonder if there is situations where I need this second mom in play to push through the last couple of points of damage. There are worlds where I can end up putting this Grizzlebrand on the defensive. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm also not that far away. This is just the second show and tell. Nope. Too much mana for show and tell? Nope, it is the sneak attack. Womp womp. Interestingly, if opponent didn't have sneak attack plus this this turn, Aspirant would have been lethal if they... Well, no, no, it wouldn't have, because they would have gained 7. I take it back. So if I know my opponent is willing to just, like, YOLO put Grizzlebrand into play versus Death and Taxes, which is pretty sketchy, 
Um, there's an argument to play more swords to plowshares to have answers to that. Or to throw in the Legion Angel just so I have one more thing that mom could protect. Rasek Matos, thank you very much for following. Um, this hand doesn't do anything. It has Wisps, which are like cool and all. Uh, it has a Caracas, which is kind of nice. This might be good enough to keep against this show and tell player. I would mulligan this versus a better show and tell player. So Skyclave Apparition is capped at CMC4 or less. So I don't think you get your wish. Okay. I'll put in Flicker Wisp. That can flicker in Omni. Or it, uh, I guess, can flicker a Grizzlebrand. Sure. Draw some more cards. Let this flicker wisp kill you faster. No one reads cards. What makes magic difficult? You have to play long enough to figure out what all the cards do without actually reading them. It takes years to master. That's why all the pro players are, like, the same people. LSV, he's been around forever. That's why he's so good. He's figured out what most of the cards do. No, they probably could have waited on drawing cards. Not like a Containment Priest effect at one mana. Oh, that's a fucking insane draw. Now I don't have to worry about playing around days while also playing a threat. This is great. Fucking love Aspirant. Wee. Okay, you could do this in response to the Luminarch Aspirant trigger for more value. Okay, that's, that's fine too. I think I'm just playing two cards this turn. A 
We'll name sneak attack with this. That is looking very hard for a Force of Will for a Phyrexian Revoker. Well, 100% ram the Stoneforge Mystic into a daze here. My opponent is picking up lands. That's probably a net positive for me when they're at 7 life. What does that do? That just like increased my clock. We beat not of this world, we just Caracas it twice. They have Petal Stifle, they beat us when I Caracas it on my turn anyway, so... Didn't have to play around it, it beat us. Eh. Uh, Reval Chief, what I was talking about was the uh, the Caracas that's on board was known info. So if they show and tell in Emrakul, I just like untap Caracas it and they're dead. Uh, well, Lord Dark you, we got paired against 2019 pile of cards. Then we got paired against elves. I decided to concede in match one for my sanity. And then we just got Muxist. So it's been an hour and a half and we're through four rounds, uh, which is blistering speed with DNT. Uh, it, uh, it has not been an enjoyable evening. Um, I've played Modern in the past, but my interest in Modern waned with every banning cycle that happened. Like, I loved Modern, um, probably almost as much as Legacy when Splinter Twin was legal. And then I still played it after that. And then, like, Dig got banned, and I lost pieces from other decks that I was playing. and. Overall, I didn't really love Modern anymore the way that I loved it when Splinter Twin was one of the most popular things in the format. Like, I loved the, like, Splinter Twin pod matchup so much. Modern D&T is good. Doubt, but okay. 
Like every every time I I go back and try modern D and T again, it's like maybe this time it'll be different, and I'll like, have a good experience for a league or two, and then like I play for a little bit longer, and I just die too many times without interacting. Probably playing against their Maverick or the Mirror. Fuck. Yeah, Splinter Twin with Teferi. Uh, that does not sound enjoyable. I'm just going to jam the Aspirant and let it start growing. Then next turn, I can source the Plowshares and Thalia in the same turn cycle, or I can just play Skyclave Apparition and answer the library, depending on what seems more important to do at the time. My experience with Legacy right now is it's a roller coaster. Like the leagues that are fun are really fun, and the leagues that are terrible make me want to quit Magic. That's kind of how I I feel like the format is at right now. Opponent didn't take any extra cards with Sylvan Library last turn, so we actually get to like take the Sylvan Library before it does real damage to us, which is pretty huge. And then I have Flicker Wisp to reset it. Ten minutes or so, Bailey. It's pretty close to me. Kind of interesting whether or not I want to try to use the Flicker Wisp in this turn cycle. It's so much safer for me to do it once some other runes is in play for a number of different reasons. Yeah, I know. But doing it this way means that I can put my opponent out of range of easily casting a Swords to Plowshares to take out my stuff.
Green Sun? Oh, Kaya. That's annoying. That takes care of Mom. That kills Kaya. This hits them. Call it a turn. Have a Flicker Wisp. Do, uh, do Skyclave Aspirant shenanigans a little bit later. Evening, Jay. Welcome. I just put a counter on Aspirant and then attack with both my creatures, right? If they trade a Knight of Autumn for it, then I Flicker Wisp the token. That ends up with me being in about the same spot as I otherwise would be. Yeah. Black, black, white, 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 white. Just nug by you, I guess. Magic, four, life, pretty good. I picked up a really fun game this weekend. I picked up a Bloodstained Ritual of the Night for the Switch, which is a Metroidvania game. Like, feels very much like Game Boy Advance DS era. Uh, Castlevania games and I, I just like sat in front of my TV for like 10 hours this weekend and just like enjoyed that game oh I love Hades I'm probably going to play a Hades run after this Zotmaster, can you explain, like, in what way? Oh, oh, I, I see what you mean. Like, I don't need you, Konami, I can do this by myself. Just fine. That makes sense. And it's so good. Like, it, uh, just the gameplay mechanics are just so crisp and clean.
Oh yeah, he definitely made his own game with blackjack and hookers. And cat ears. <laughs> Some of the items make me laugh sometimes. Um, so let's operate under the assumption that we are playing against Maverick. Board in like these, these, maybe one of these. Board out some number of Thalias. There's minor slowdown, like visual lag occasionally in the game. Not unacceptably so, but just like every once in a while, the game will be loading and it takes a quarter of a second for it to catch up and it's noticeable. But that's my only complaint. Why two Caracas? Basic planes is fucking baller. So good. Doesn't get wastelanded, doesn't get back to basics, doesn't get blood mooned. It does so much. I don't know what my last cut is supposed to be. Maybe it's one mom, assuming that my opponent is playing some plague engineers. Just like take out one more X1. Now, the thing I'm really loving about Bloodstained right now is that. It doesn't funnel you in any one direction in terms of story progression. Once you kind of make it to the mid game, it's just like choose your own adventure, go explore where you want. You'll have to come back to some places later, but there's so many different places you can explore and you can do them in all sorts of different orders. I like that a lot. A lot of the Metroidvanias like lock you very much into one sequence, even though they have this like beautiful world to explore, and this one doesn't do that. Wow, I'm only going to five. We are potentially going to get to see the Aspirant into Aspirant clock this game, uh, which is pretty nutty. You're pretty good at 8 mana. Until then, you're not super scary. There's a world where I just wasteland my opponent to keep them off of Hex Drinker Ultimate. But I'm pretty sure I'll be able to race Hex Drinker. I don't know. They, they have two cards left. Not even guaranteed to have the third land. I think I just go like Aspirant into Aspirant Wasteland or Aspirant Jitte, and I probably win this game. Wastelanding is fine too, though. Uh, Wasteland takes them off the two colors. Eh, screw it. I think if they didn't mulligan into Oblivion, I would just uh, play Aspirant, but since they mulligan into Oblivion, it just kind of makes sense to attack the mana. This is also insane, but... Opponent didn't have a land this turn. They have to top deck a land, and even if they do top deck a land, I think I'm, I'm in the better position.
protection from instance, huh? We'll see how that uh that works out. Oh, they're going aggro. That's fine. That's an insane draw. I want to incentivize my opponent to keep attacking with the Hex Drinker so I can get Jete counters in this turn cycle. That's a nuisance. That does like everything a card would need to do to help stabilize from the current situation. I don't need to draw a body. I don't love this. But I don't think I can sit back and just let my opponent level up the Hex Drinker. I think we have to play another game here. I have the Jitte counter, so I can represent a lot of damage. My opponent hits a land this turn, and they can hit me for... 6 next turn. Starts to be a little more problematic. Um, I'm going to be dead to that, having protection from everything. Needed to hit a creature this turn to have a shot. Uh, keep playing as if I do have a creature. But I, I believe I have no outs. I'm going to take another draw step just in case I'm not thinking of something. Oh, uh, no, I do have an out. I have, because it's not going to get leveled fully, so I can still, like, Wisp and uh, New Idiot it. 
backwards. Protection from instance. Yep. All right. Um, we drew too many blanks there. Plague Engineer was just like the actual perfect card to beat me there. Because not only did it kill one of my creatures and weaken the other, it also traded with my other body on board and meant that I didn't have a second creature around to just ride the Jitata victory. Um, so that was pretty brutal. Keep that. <sighs> and it's bad. But I think I have to keep it. This is the sort of hand that is probably just going to get rolled by something like a Sylvan Library. No, leagues don't really have brackets. There is an algorithm that tries to pair you with someone that has the same record, but in reality for legacy leagues that have so few people, you more frequently than not just get paired against someone. Just kind of due to the number of people that are playing. Opponent Stone Cold keep a no lander on six? Or do they just like F6 through their turn? Well, that's going to be good. Deal! 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 I get to cast Legion Angel this turn. All. Get a bayou. Get a bayou, I dare you. Ah. Oh, that's that's fine. The correct to tick up. Probably correct to tick up. <laughs> uh nice. I'm going to get all four. I don't even care about removing this collector oof, I don't think. I'll probably do it if my opponent doesn't cast something better. But like, at five lands, I'm pretty good just casting Legion Angels for the next two turns. Why would you not attack with Collector Oof? The vial is not active. Um, if a mod wants to check that link and let me know whether or not that user should be banned, 
Um, that would be great. I assume the answer is yes, but... Oh, okay, well, whatever. Okay, Un unsure if spam bot or not. Gut said yes, though. I'm going to use the ability. Oh, there are no matching cards. Do you, would you like to name Angel? I'd like to name Warrior. Oh. I would like to use the ability. Oh. Well, this is main. It did say to wish for, I believe. I know the reliquary. Field of Ruin, the like, A2, destroy a land, search a land. Uh, I think that's the card I'm thinking of. Uh, it sees very fringe legacy play. Like, very fringe. I happen to have played it in the last week. That is not the norm. Like, I played it in a mill deck where we wanted to force our opponents to search so that we could cast archive traps, but like, that's not the norm. Wizard Deathbeam, you can always grab a screenshot from uh, the YouTube VOD later. Uh, this will go up on YouTube tomorrow at some point on the Thraben U channel. Okay. Three of the rounds tonight were just an absolute dumpster fire that uh, we we just didn't have a chance in. And then we played two games of Reasonable Magic that we won. So I'm talking about the Reasonable Games of Magic that we played. In the Reasonable Games of Magic that we played, Legion Angel actually looked like surprisingly good. Oh, you meant for me for Twitter? Yeah, I mean, I've cast enough Squadron Hawks at this point in my career that, like, this is just the norm, right? Like, I, I just get how that works. So it's not all that, like, new and exciting to me. Um... I don't know whether access to Legion Angel is worth three of your sideboard slots, but the card actually looked good tonight. Just like no ifs, ands, or buts about it, it just drew me a bunch of beaters, and that was strong. Yes, yes, Asperin is very good. Asperin is very, very, very good. 
I've been super impressed by that card. This is League 8 or 9 that I've played with it. Um, I'm not really considering adjusting the numbers on it. Just very, very impressed by that card all around. So if you are looking for a way to like grind versus snow decks or other control decks, like this is very much a viable option. Is it better than just playing like, I don't know, Gideon Gideon Council's Judgment in the sideboard or equivalent? I don't know. But this this is a real plan. Like on on the scale of great to meme to unplayable, it's it's past the point of just total meme into like maybe this is actually playable territory. But again, like very small sample size in terms of number of games. But the games where this appeared, it did look incredibly good. Um I don't have too much to say in terms of debriefing this tonight because like we played against Miracles where they cast Entreat multiple rounds in a row, and like Miracles is a deck that would prey on Aspirant, and because that was not really a huge part of the metagame, I was comfortable building Aspirant-based decks. Um, so like, yes, this version of DNT folds harder to sweepers than normal, but that's something I knew when I built it. Um, yeah, I think that's... Mats, what, what I did this league was I put three in the sideboard, and then when it was good, I moved one into the main deck so that I have a greater chance of drawing it. It's possible that, like, two in the main deck is totally fine as well, but if I do that, I don't know that I get to play four Aspirant, and I really like that card. Like, if I was playing a more traditional d &T list, like something closer to what Extra Cloud was doing, I threw two Legion Angels into that, that would probably be good. But if I want to stick with a whole bunch of Aspirants, then I don't know that I can make room for another slot here without removing an Aspirant. And, I, and I've already removed a Stoneforge. I don't want to remove too many two drops here or four drops. Marcy, Shabakun. Razek Matos, thank you all very much for following. Yeah, all right, I think that's the tail end of what I have to say about this. Um, this league went super quickly, and I didn't actually, like, play one of the rounds. I just, like, auto-conceded versus Elves. Uh, so I'm going to call two donations, or sorry, not two donations, uh, two uh, subs tonight good enough to, uh, to play some more D&T next week.